Welcome everyone. We are starting the webinar now. My name is Aditi. I am representing Path Infotech and I'll be moderating the webinar today. I would like to thank all of you for joining us. The topic of today's webinar is Microsoft Power Automate, bringing intelligent automation to your business processes. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Your lines will remain muted during this session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your control panel. The question answer round will be at the end of the session and we will address your questions at that time. The session is getting recorded. The link would be shared with all the participants post webinar. We have a special offer for all the participants. We'll share the details at the end of the session. Let us begin today's session with a quick recap of what we covered in our last webinar, SharePoint Online Supercharging Intranet Experience. We have spoken about how SharePoint Online uh, is bringing innovation to the organizations, focusing on streaming uh, task management, creating seamless collaboration frameworks, and how intelligent intranet is supercharging user experience. And along with this, we also spoke about uh, Microsoft Power Apps and how these are changing the way businesses operate and perform. Looking at the feedback we receive, we are bringing more sessions where we will be deep diving into the different aspects of Microsoft Power Apps. Today's session will be on pa Microsoft Power Automate and we are highly obliged to have our two wonderful speakers for this webinar today. We have with us Gensys. Gensys is partner technology uh, strategist in Microsoft Singapore. He has over eight years of experience in the IT industry, having served in sales, pre-sales, consultancy, and application development roles in Singapore and the Asia Pacific region. He is responsible for driving the technical enablement and supporting partners uh, during practice building and the technical pre-sales process. He's also instrumental in driving channel engagement to accelerate new cloud customer acquisition. Hi, Jensis, how are you? Hey, hi, good afternoon, I'm fine. Thanks for having me here. Glad to have you here, uh, Jensis. We also have Dr. Nikhil. Dr. Nikhil is business analyst at Path Infotech Australia. Nikhil is a technology professional with 20 plus years of experience in areas like business process automation, analytics, digital transformation, consulting, and delivery. He has extensively worked with customers across geographies and industry verticals on diverse technology platforms, enabling and empowering businesses on their journey to innovation and growth. Hi, Nikhil, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Aditi, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you so much for asking. Uh, Nikhil, uh, thank you for being here and part of our session. Now I would request you, uh, Nikhil, to take the lead from here and give us all an insightful session. Over to you. Thanks, Aditi. And um, uh, I should say, Jensis, it is good to have you today with us. Thanks for having me here, Nikhil. Okay, to start off the session, I believe uh, the three important pillars around which uh, uh, you can say the way the world of work is changing in today's era is dependent and it's getting reflected in all these uh, marketing researches uh, done by Gartner and probably there are other organizations in the market who are doing the research and a similar kind of sentiment is coming out. And uh, definitely we are trying to understand like what is behind this change we are seeing the automation industry market growing 62.9 percent it is an enormous number and we are also parallelly visualizing and also predict there is a prediction that by 2023 almost 50 percent of large enterprises will be adopting low code application platform so where are we going so all these pointers are actually uh, trying to uh, give us an insight that the business users are getting enabled. The line between IT department and businesses are, is getting thinner, right? So this is something which is coming up. 
but but definitely um, i would like to put up this question to genesis that uh, what possibly genesis uh, you think that uh, these are the reflections what are the factors which are actually leading to this kind of a change yes so i think over the last few years we have seen a lot of companies be it whether is it the small smb to the large enterprises moving to the cloud at a tremendous rate and digital transformation is uh, prevalent in all aspects of the industry today uh, especially in this time of covid uh, has quoted from satya we have seen two years worth of digital transformation that took place over the last couple of months due to this pandemic as well and a lot of this is actually focusing in the small in the, in the smaller business the mid market business a lot and the reason is because small businesses have traditionally relied on manual or outdated methods that they can't keep up with the changing business needs or the customer expectation of today's modern commerce it's also at the same time getting challenging to find technical talents to actually help these companies to build application and often some of these in-house application that this companies are seeking for are not complex. Hence, which can also be easily managed through using a local platform without any heavy investment. And this is where we are seeing a shift in paradigm where people are actually looking to insource and look for a platform that they have the flexibilities to create their own application or to serve their business processes. Right, right. So I believe definitely there is a shift in the way uh, business is looking at empowering their users. Uh, trying to reduce the learning timelines and definitely increasing the productivity of each and every individual who is engaged into the business activity. But however, um, there is a change. We all agree on that. And uh, definitely to establish uh, this, I have a very uh, quick video for everyone to have a look how the world of work is changing today for us all. You commute into the office on the same train each day. You get to the office, you get your coffee, you sit at a desk, this piece of wood, and you're there for eight hours. It's like a prison to me. It's the physical environment that's built to separate and silo. Okay, well, you don't need to know this kind of information. You should only know what you need to do to stuff this tube into this bottle or whatever. We're now tethered to devices that beep at us all day long. 47 reply alls that consist of two word answers. On average, 77% uh, of the UK workforce feels that a productive day in the office is clearing their email. Oh my God. You know, it's just shocking to think that actually the process of work has become work itself. When did, when did that happen? So it's important, like the messaging, if you hear the last one, that the process of work is becoming a work in itself. So that's uh, what is getting identified by the business. And more and more business are trying to embrace automation and trying to let the automation drive the process and not the human capital getting invested into just following the process, answering emails or maybe filling up uh, some excel sheet or uploading data right so that's the intent um, how the shift is happening and how people are embracing automation to ensure the process is taken care of automatically right so as much as we are trying to say that uh, we will see that how the technology firms and the solution providers like us are bringing in platforms technologies which are helping this transformation to happen right so as much as we are including a couple of videos here, we also have a few poll questions to keep the session interactive and also understand how this kind of a change is impacting you all as well. Right. So I have a quick poll after this particular slide and I would like to request Aditi to bring up the poll for everyone. Ashanikin. So there's a poll on your screens right now. I would request you to please take a moment to answer the question. So it's a pretty much straightforward question. Um, definitely around you when you are looking around your workplace, uh, there will be a couple of activities that you believe um, are of repetitive nature. 
and as soon as you believe it is of a repetitive nature and uh, it, it becomes a very good candidate for automation right and I'm, I'm actually seeing a very good um, response coming in aditi you won't believe it it is almost 96 percent people are saying yes yeah nikhil Still counting on. Yep. Thanks everyone for participating in the poll. It's good. 96% people identify that there are processes around them which can be automated, right? That's that's amazing, um, and uh, that's the basis where uh, the whole crux of automation transformation is happening, right? I would like to bring up uh, the next slide where I would request Genesis to take a uh, lead and guide us how Microsoft is actually playing an important role in this marketplace. Thank you, Nikhil. So before going deep into our low-code, no-code platform, um, we have to start from somewhere. And I believe many of you customers are using one of two of our clouds uh, platform today. So let me just quickly go through uh, an overview of what where Microsoft has and is actually providing with customer. Firstly, which is Microsoft Azure. It's our hyperscale cloud platform serving hundreds of customers hosting their core infrastructure, helping you to modernize your application with our platform as a service and potentially hosting your SaaS application as well. And helping, helping customers to secure through a manage global infrastructure across more than 60 plus region globally and adhering to more than 90 plus global international industry and local compliance and regulations perhaps you are on our productivity cloud microsoft 365 um, more than just giving you your favorite applications that you have such as word and excel is our productivity cloud designed for business that brings the best in class productivity apps reef cutting edge online services device management and also intelligent security, right? Beneath the productivity cloud, which is also AI that enables people to enhance their own capability to automate <clears throat> low value work and also unlock insights in the masses of data points gathered within the productivity cloud to understand how your employees are actually interacting, collaborating, and to also look at their productivity as well. And lastly, to touch on that is our intelligent business application suite. Microsoft Dynamics 365 is providing across from customer engagement modules such as Salesforce automation to customer service and to finance and operations. Where we look at in terms of customers who are vested in one of the three clouds, do you find the different data or the different signal that's actually coming out from the organization, which is Microsoft Power Platform? It provides a comprehensive set of local tools to meet your needs. Um, whether is it to build applications or to modernize or to garner any data-driven insight. It provides a native integration across the three clouds, as I mentioned earlier, and also beyond just first party, it also provides integration to hundreds of other apps, resulting in a comprehensive end-to-end -end business solution for your organization. Next slide, please. So just to give you a quick overview of what Microsoft Power Platform is, as I mentioned, it's a local platform that spans across our three services and also other standalone applications. Just a quick overview, um, we have four key components within Power Platform. Firstly, which is Power BI, is a data visualization platform that allows you to bring any data sources into the platform and build an interactive and intelligent dashboard. We have Power Apps that allows anyone to create a no-code, low-code uh, custom app that can share and collect user data uh, across different data sources and allows you to create applications for different form factors, for be it whether it's for the web browser or for your uh, modern devices such as um, mobile tab, uh, mobile devices and tablets, etc. We also have Power Virtual Agents, is where users can easily create and publish AI-driven chatbots experience that automate processes and, and also it integrates with other data sources to provide meaningful assistance to users alike. And lastly, we have Power Automate, 
It basically simplifies the creation of automated workflows and enables business logic to simplify app building. And not just that, it also provides a lot more other values. And recently we have added RPA in Power Automate as well, where it takes low code application experience one step further by providing a bridge between older legacy application to modern solutions. Genesis, it looks like we are missing common data services. What happened to it? Uh, yes. So recently we have rebranded common data service um, as Microsoft Dataverse. Basically, it's a fully managed low-code data platform that allows teams, allows end users to quickly have a business-like taxonomy for them to build meaningful applications with uh, able to store data within uh, this platform itself. Right. We also recently announced Microsoft Dataverse for Microsoft Teams, which is essentially a subset of this capability, including a powerful built-in data platform for millions of team users and no additional costs. So we are also bringing that application innovation into Teams as well, which is also one of the um, mostly used productivity collaboration platform uh, for all users as well. Yeah, I think um, the Microsoft Teams is becoming more powerful uh, day by day. Uh, that's a good one. Uh... Yeah, so I think this is where we also have seen in terms of the key challenges that uh, typical customers um, that we have uh, engaged. And these are the commonly um, factors of where, where customers are actually looking at in terms of the consideration for the need of automation. Um, essentially, businesses are facing pressure from every single angle to become more productive and efficient and also resources are finite. Even given for, for this pandemic, especially a lot of cost cutting is, uh, measures are actually taken in fact, but yet um, consumer like, uh, like us are also requiring businesses to be as efficient uh, as possible, right? There's only so much that a business can actually do with a limited set of resources, right? And hence this is where we look at, you know, having a empowerment to look at using automation to deliver and organization wide impact. It can potentially help you to streamline everyday business processes, help you to securely scale and manage the governance of the data and bridge the gap, most importantly, with your legacy application and your on-premise and cloud software as well. And not just that, and a lot of customers uh, over the couple of months don't see it just only as a challenge, but it presents as an opportunity for them to relook really the way on how they want to, number one, Firstly, sustain the business. Number two, grow the business. And lastly, is to how do they create a new business out from their existing business model as well. Yeah, I, I really believe um, uh, high cost and uh, security compliance are becoming quite important in driving uh, these challenges uh, into opportunities. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much uh, what is driving, I think, this particular market forward. Thanks, let yes. me on. So essentially, um, from this point, I would like you as audience to actually just think about it, right? As um, Nikhil share deeper for the rest of the webinar, think about it, what are the potential areas that you can actually leverage on automation to take advantage with during this period? Perhaps during the presentation, you might have one to two, key, two ideas potentially you might think that you can actually explore. Please feel free to actually let us know and engage um, us to take this further together with you. Yeah, I, I believe um, there is an opportunity in the marketplace and opportunity in almost every business where if we start empowering the business users and giving them the control to automate their day-to-day -day tasks, it becomes really important and and definitely the overall uh, just what comes is that what is actually important for you to handle personally yes so Nikhil, what do you think is the best way to identify the feasibility of automation yeah i believe uh, see what uh, i have seen jens is that uh, uh, as a businessman uh, the straightforward calculation what people do is that okay, I have two people who are engaged in a manual work. And if that work is getting automated, I can straightforward start calculating uh, the ROI based on the number of FTEs, right? 
So that becomes a really straightforward calculation. And I believe it's, it becomes very easy. And that is one reason why automation is picking up at, at a very high pace. That, that's again, one of the reasons there are multiple, but uh, that is something which I believe is uh, something that is quickly driving things forward. Moving ahead, uh, with respect to the unified automation platform, I believe as much as we are trying to enable each and every person in the organization to start performing automation, it is really important to have some, some platform that gives you that kind of a capability with minimal learning curve. So personally, out of these eight pillars, what you're seeing here, one of my favorite pillars is the availability of pre-built templates because that is something which enables every individual to start their journeys, take the first step forward. And definitely when you start the take, uh, taking the first step forward, you have the whole uh, suite of features to start exploring, right? So apart from thousands of templates which are available that can help you to quickly start off, you have integration flexibilities where you don't have to go and write custom integration codes to uh, allow two different applications to talk to each other. And one of the sweetest spot here is, if you look on the lower right hand side where we are talking about embedding intelligence or infusing intelligence into automation, that becomes a very sweet spot and that too in the hands of business users. Right, so uh, definitely uh, I would like to um, put a question to Jensers about uh, what are the popular templates, maybe maybe top one or two, what you often remember that people are using the most to start their journey for automation? Sure, Nikhil. So I think a very straightforward no brainer is on how can we actually look at implementing a simple approval process, be it whether from a trigger, when someone receives a document that requires different level of, of, of approvals, um, or perhaps it can be running a scheduled job at a certain hour um, over the night, right? To consolidate certain information from different data sources to a database or even to something simple such as an Excel sheet, for example. So we have those very simple templates uh, available out of the box um, that any users will be able to quickly um, leverage on them and to just to run something simple for them to discover even more things that they potentially can do with the platform as well. Yeah, probably I totally agree with you that uh, those are some of the simple tasks which uh, almost exist in every, um, you can say in every cubicle in, in a business or an office um, scenario. And I think uh, that is taking the first step is very important uh, because business users, we don't expect them to be highly technically skilled. So we are giving them something to start off the journey. And, and it's really good, empowering exactly. everybody. Yes. Exactly. So um, just a very simple example for myself is that I actually use Power Automate to create a um, specific notification when I receive an email, especially for my manager. Um, mm -hmm. I do not just create for the sake of um, sending me a notification to my mobile phone, but mm -hmm. I also look at picking up specific keywords or parameters within the email that needs my right. immediate attention from my manager as well. So these are the simple things, even as an individual, I'm actually doing that and practicing myself as well to discover what I can actually do to automate certain stuff, to, to increase my visibility in terms of, of my businesses or to improve certain processes I might be doing from a day-to-day -day perspective. Agreed, totally agreed. And one thing more here is, uh, one thing fantastic which comes is that M365 is, is a complete suite. And most of the organization who have already embraced O365, M365, Exchange Online platforms, they already have the licenses there and they don't have to worry about uh, that, okay, people will start using it, there will be an additional burden for them. No, they, they can just enable them under the same licensing regime, under the same umbrella and it's all good. I, I think that's that's something that that's a sweet spot about this particular uh, you can say platform and I, I must say that the complete suite the way it is designed developed and delivered uh, it has the capability for the pro developers the people who are highly technical because it allows you to create custom 
um, connectors, custom actions, as well as it is something which is, uh, uh, you can say, utilized and consumed by citizen developers because there are tools which are more of a drag and drop kind of a uh, interface and people can start using it quickly uh, using those kind of a tools. Right. So that is something which which actually increases the adoption, increases the efficiency of people they work. And um, yeah, it is it is something really uh, going great uh, ahead. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 um, I second that uh, thought and, and, and definitely the point where uh, we actually unite at one place is that when we are talking about automation, uh, there is a big difference when we talk automation in today's scenario, if I start comparing the automation 20 years back. 20 years back, when we talked about automations, we are talking about scripts, we are talking about database triggers, stored procedures, uh, uh, like scripts which can run, do the job and just stop. But in today's scenario, it is something where we are talking about a complete process, and moving that process from point A to point B, following complete logical steps and processes in a automated fashion. So that's the difference what we are seeing, or rather I have noticed in, in past uh, decade, how the, um, you can say automation word itself is getting transformed. Now today we are talking about AI that is getting embedded into automation. We are talking about digital process automation. We are talking about the robotic process automation. So this is something which again is getting um, transformed in terms of how you are trying to look at automation as a whole, right? But I think um, uh, without any further delay, I would like to just quickly share a little uh, short video, which will, it, it's animation, right? And it will give you an understanding that how this platform works. You probably already know that Microsoft has a way to automate tons of highly repetitive manual tasks to seamlessly connect your favorite apps so you can be more productive. It's called Microsoft Power Automate, and now it's fully baked into the Microsoft Power Platform. Like when someone tweets about your company, Power Automate makes it easy for just about anyone to quickly create a flow that follows them, sends a nice reply, adds them to a spreadsheet that gets emailed to you for your approval, then adds their contact to Salesforce or Dynamics 365. And this streamlined approval process works with data in Twitter, Microsoft Teams, Excel, and over 100 other services too. However, you may not know that now you can easily automate legacy processes even if they don't have APIs, using a little bit of genius called Robotic Process Automation, or RPA, to create UI flows. For example, say you're a clinic operating off a legacy system. Every time you finish meeting with a patient, you have to extract lots and lots of data fields and details about their visit from your desktop to your patient tracking system. Ample opportunity for mistakes and a giant waste of time. With Power Automate, just create a UI flow that automatically records every action you take. Review it, make any edits you want, then add it to an existing flow. Simple as that. And this way, you can seamlessly integrate your legacy software across modern applications and services without a big upfront investment. Power Automate lets you securely scale across your whole organization with confidence, from simple tasks to super complex enterprise-wide processes. If you're ready for cloud-powered automation for a fast-paced modern world, learn more at PowerAutomate.com. Then, Power Automate, and unlock what's next. Yep, um, I believe Jens is always when I'm talking about or thinking about process, I'm thinking about maybe a robotic or a DPA, there's always a question that comes into my mind that how AI can actually help you improve automation or rather I should say, put it this way that how AI can help business, right? So maybe if you want, want to put some light around this uh, particular um, topic, Sure. So I think a lot of times when I speak, uh, especially to the SME customers, when I talk about the notion of AI, um, oftentimes they always have to fear that AI is actually here to replace their roles, right? Their jobs, right? Um, essentially, AI is not here to replace anybody, um, but it's to empower, value add, and improve your productivity in terms of the things that you do, allowing you to have more time to actually do 
something that is such as of more value um, to your organization, right? With AI being av easily available to anybody, uh, not just for the IT pros, but even for the end users, um, they can easily infuse into their daily work, right? Tailor according to their needs, enhance their digital experience, uh, be it for the internal folks or even with their customer as well, right? So some of these things like uh, has shown here in terms of AI builders or even power virtual agents, these are a really uh, predefined platforms that allows you to just to provide simple business logic for you to quickly create your own uniqueness uh, when it comes to much uh, when it comes to AI that can actually help your business to move forward. Yep, I think. Uh... I, I think it's it's a very powerful statement. AI is not here to replace anybody. It is here to to enhance our efficiency. It is here to enhance uh, the capability of the applications what we use or processes with what we are trying to automate. Maybe we'll have a have a quick understanding about um, the AI builder. Uh, that that's again a kind of a tool that gives you a capability of drag and drop. Um, invoke your existing pre-built AI models which are available uh, and definitely when the models are available it will give you a very quick first step to take into that journey and start understanding how those um, models can start helping you. So th there are a couple of models which are available uh, made available uh, by Microsoft and that you can just quickly start off using it and uh, uh, definitely, if you look at a couple of uh, models which are available off the shelf is text recognition model, business card reader model, right? Sentiment analysis model. So if, if I take a very, you can say, basic example um, uh, about understanding how these models can work for you. If I take an example of a business card reader. So if I am assuming that I myself is an, I am an AI, right? And um, uh, Genesis sends me a couple of uh, uh, business cards. And some of the business cards have phone numbers on the top right corner and some of the business cards have phone numbers on the top left corner. So if I am I am a traditional OCR, I will always look for phone numbers on the top right because that's how I'm programmed, right? But if I start adding intelligence into my process, taking advantage of this AI model, after one or two rounds, when uh, maybe Genesis can highlight that Nickel, you have to take a look on the top right and left both the sides, or maybe all the four corners to identify which is the phone number. Probably after two, three runs, I will get trained. I will get that intelligence built in to identify that, okay, these are all business cards and where to find the numbers or what is the correct format of the numbers. So the accuracy of the process will increase. So it's a very you can say uh, I can say a lightweight comparison of a traditional OCR and a OCR process, which is powered by an AI model. Right? Maybe may, Genesis, uh, if you if you would like to share some of your experience on these uh, use cases on AI models, it will be great for the audience. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, basically a lot of the things that we we use, uh, especially if you are on Microsoft 365. Um, I'm not sure if you realize some of the AI infused feature are actually built into the into those productivity tools that you use, such as Outlook, um, such as Word, uh, Excel, and PowerPoint, for example, right? These are actually all the AI features that we actually put on the back end that allows users to be more productive. So for example, um, if I'm doing a PowerPoint slide today and the number one challenge for anyone who is not creative like myself is how do I actually create a very nice team um, or a template that I need to present for a customer's meeting, right? So essentially, I can actually drag some simple images into the, into the slide. Is it can also then what PowerPoint will do is that it will recommend a certain format or certain structure that they can actually propose on how I want to design my slide. That's one. It also has intelligence enough to actually understand the context of the image as well, providing you. Um, information and especially we are very big on accessibility providing you additional metadata to to actually tag those images to describe what's happening or what are the objects available in those images as well so these are some of the things towards the end user it might be just um, something simple but you can see these are the typical kind of things um, 
uh, and tasks that we are doing from a day-to-day -day perspective that we are also slowly infusing AI into those that it becomes something that is very natural and an extension of our capabilities to uh, in our day-to-day -day work. Yep, I think uh, that's that's a uh, very uh, you can say useful implementation of AI, and everybody is actually taking benefit of that uh, in in day to day working, and, and it's a really good example uh, to share. Right now, moving ahead, um, there are two two other pillars apart from intelligence. We were talking about digital process automation, and we were talking about uh, robotic process automation. So. Inherently, these two pillars differ in a way that DPA or digital process automation is more targeted towards um, modern applications. So modern applications which have capability to interact with uh, other applications using application programming interface, right? So those kind of capabilities, something uh, which was there into the system and um, we, it, it was earlier known as Microsoft Flow. Later on, it was changed as Microsoft Automate. But but that was something there. And if you are uh, planning to move the data on a regular basis, on a basis of certain trigger from one application to another, it is a perfect fit when we talk about APIs. And and it becomes more powerful uh, because there are a lot of APIs and connectors which are already available. So if you think of uh, any applications, maybe you talk about Salesforce, you talk about um, Dynamic 365, you talk about MailChimp, all those connectors are available, right? So available, ready to use. That makes it more powerful and um, you can say flexible for users to start using it very quickly. So it's all about taking the first step and how fast you can take it, how, can, how fast you can move towards that journey. So again, when I say uh, 350 plus connected, it is something the number of what I have seen is quickly growing because every day I'm seeing, or rather every time when I'm visiting the website, I'm seeing there are new connectors being introduced uh, into the marketplace. And th this is really great, the, the speed with which it is moving uh, forward in terms of innovations. Now, when we talk about uh, uh, processes, right? There has to be two key components in a process. One component is how do you start a process? So essentially we talk about triggers, right? So triggers can be, uh, if you start thinking in terms of trigger, you are trying to create a document within a SharePoint document library. That can be a possible trigger. A, a very possible trigger can be a button on a form which you click and it initiates a process. So any, any activity that is trying to start a process is a trigger and there are hundreds of triggers available in the platform where you can initiate the process. Now, apart from the triggers, I should say uh, there is a piece between point A and B is the logic, how your workflow moves, what are the conditions around which it is actually getting re redirected from one place to another. So those are possible actions. So you have hundreds of triggers, thousands of actions available within the DPA process. Now, one thing important here is one, when we talk about um, triggers and actions, what will happen if I have a legacy application in my business place and I am really in love with it, I don't want to take it away, what will happen? So there is always, uh, you can say, a tendency that you might be having an application which is at least doing the job and it is still working fine and you don't want to take it away. How you are going to bridge the gap between the old application and, and the new application? Possibly that was one of the reasons why Microsoft brought in uh, this fantastic piece of intelligent tool. Uh, we call it as RPA. Now, this particular tool is uh, capable of interacting with applications which doesn't have uh, API or application programming interfaces. Right. It is really something really good for people who still want to use a legacy application, but they also want the data movement to happen either from the leg legacy application to a modern one or from the modern application to a legacy one. And these are two fantastic, uh, you can say, um, chillers within the RPA that comes into picture. And, uh, uh, Jensus, one thing I could understand here is 
uh, here also there is a very correct balance uh, being taken care of that um, about the business user using the RPA tool and an expert are using RPA tool. So if I look at the really on the left hand side where we talk about attended robots, right? It is something which um, I believe very much targeted to citizen developers. And on the right hand side, if I talk about fully automated or unattended robots, I, I understand that this is something which um, an expert automation uh, engineer can take care of. Right. What other differences what you feel uh, between these two uh, can be possibly uh, there? Yes, so basically, I think at the end of the day, we will talk about, you know, having providing end users with the capability to do RPA. We are also very mindful in terms of the different levels of skill set and understanding, uh, especially when it comes to a technology platform, right? Um, and hence is where we want to be able to provide these capabilities to all users as much as possible. Um, so if we talk about those, um, like on the slide, like human initiated, definitely this is where um, someone has a power user or even a citizen developers is able to take forth and to create um, the necessary processes to actually help with that particular uh, which, whichever workflow that they're actually looking at or whichever tasks that they are actually trying to achieve, right? But yeah. for more complex use cases where there is a need to perform a high level of um, tedious tasks or even to integrate legacy with uh, modern application, then this is where mm -hmm. we need the skill set and understanding from a IT pro um, to be able to build more com more complexity to actually solve that challenges as well. Right, right. I, I, I totally agree on that. Um, but still, I feel that uh, the kind of a tool which we are witnessing in the next slide, which is a Win automation tool, um, and I have personally put hands on this tool, and I see that um, again, having a attended robot sitting on my laptop or a desktop, I can easily drag and drop the pre-built actions and try to automate some of the day-to-day -day tasks very easily, right? So that is something which, which really still resonates that um, you are empowering the business user, you are providing the tools available under the same licensing umbrella, same technology platform, and you are trying to improve their efficiency and effectiveness within the system. So this is something which really resonates well. But one thing always comes to my mind, um, uh, Jens, is that this is fairly something new that has come up in, in, in the Microsoft stack, the RPA part of it. There are yes. certainly a couple of uh, features which are there, but I'm sure there'll be a roadmap. So if you can share a bit about the roadmap, what are the features currently available, or we can expect to come very soon, uh, it'll be helpful for our audience uh, to take, take a note of that as well. Sure. So um, currently on this slide, uh, what is available today is that read automation is already available for customers who has the valid licenses. Um, the integration with UI flows from Power Automate can already launch the win automation process script, whether it's for attended or unattended. And lastly, it also covers the advanced UI automation scenarios uh, with win automation. Um, coming soon, as you look on the right, there is a deeper integration that we are bringing forth from win automation into the Power Automate portfolio, where we look at centralizing a, uh, all the scripts that you are familiar with win automation with uh, Microsoft uh, with Power Automate. Next is actually looking at introducing a centralized control which provides management governance reporting of you know all your scripts and infrastructure. That's very important for the IT admins. And lastly, which is the unified UI automation runtime with flexibility to alter whether is it to a browser centric or using the desktop centric experience. Right today, it's really available across 21 regions, supporting 43 languages worldwide. And for more, you can actually refer to our online documentation to look to see more further details on what you are actually looking for uh, in this product itself. Yep, really good one. 43 languages, 21 regions covered. Okay, so soon we are uh, coming to an end of this session with a quick poll uh, between the real life use cases, what we will be sharing with you after a quick poll. And uh, I will request um, Aditi to bring up that poll very fast. 
Shonikil. There would be a poll on your screens right now. I would request you to please take a moment to answer the question. Pretty straightforward question here, just to have your understanding and um, inclination, because this is one of the series, uh, one of the webinars in the series, and there'll be more to come. And definitely we would like to understand your uh, keenness to explore this platform further. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Nikhil, uh, you can proceed. Yeah, it's pretty good response, uh, Aditi, from the audience. Uh, thanks for participation. Now we will be going ahead to look at some of the real world um, examples of automation, right? And uh, I would like to uh, take um, help from Jensus to take us to this journey. And I believe, let me start off with uh, human resources one. Sure. So I think one of the common scenario over the last few years um, that I've seen is from HR uh, and usually is looking at a having a new employee onboarding experience for them. Right. Um, if you are not um, able to actually invest in a HRMS or even with a more complex um, platform, this is where a lot of manual tasks when it comes to, you know, initiating the administrative work of onboarding a new um, employee will actually take toll on the uh, human resource manager or even administrator to, to track all the different um, processes that this new candidate is actually at. So we have seen customers leveraging on Power Automate to actually streamline the administrative um, task that is required from the offer document um, creation to offer document signing and also to once the document is being signed, it's actually uh, being put through a approval workflow as well to get the relevant managers or the different levels to be able to sign off before uh, officially onboard the new employee into the system and also to trigger a new workflow to actually get the new employee to perform certain um, tasks before turning up for work on the first day itself. And we have seen not just, you know, um, to a reseller, or through a partner, we have seen some customers who are really savvy with the platform to be able to actually create this end-to-end -end process that is uniquely to our organization on their own, right? And this is done not just uh, across a few months, it can be achieved maybe within a week, for example. Yep, I think uh, pretty much I have seen um, a dedicated HR person running pillar to the post to complete the process, but with automation, I think, um, they can start focusing on other productive tasks. Re really, um, you can say a valid use case for automation. Yeah, so not just on that, but we use, I mean, as we talked about approval processes, we also seen that, you know, approvals in general are essentially part of any business, right? Or, or any, even, let's say we drew down to different business units. Every single different business unit has different processes that requires a, um, extend or a sense of approval, right? So we have seen, you know, whether is it from Power Automate uh, with the pre-built templates, uh, we have seen users creating approval processes for things like sales quotation, when perhaps, you know, when you have a certain threshold that you need um, secondary or tertiary level approval, they can actually create a workflow that actually helps with that as well. We have seen um, using um, creating workflows to actually get uh, employees to be able to to submit their leave through a channel, whether is it through a platform, through a portal, or even submitting through a chatbot. And on the back end, it's actually being powered by Power Automate itself, right? So, um, Nikhil, just checking in with you as well. Um, is your organization today also leveraging on Power Automate to actually help with some of these approval processes that you guys are actually doing today? Yeah, definitely. See, uh, one thing what often I can remember very quickly that uh, uh, within our organization, uh, we are embracing a digital, uh, you can say, strategy to reach out to the marketplace. And uh, we are using a couple of systems uh, internally for sending out mass mails. And also we have a CRM 
uh, again, uh, CRM, which is uh, deployed, available on our platform. So we are, we are definitely encouraging embarking on that journey to automate and make the process completely seamless uh, about the lead generation process, about understanding how people are reacting to our um, campaigns, what is the kind of attractions coming in. So that journey we have already embarked and it is still pro in progress and we are actually seeing some of uh, the processes that were taking time previously are getting streamlined. So yeah, that's I think that's something really uh, cool uh, which is happening and yeah, it's a journey we started off and we are um, getting there. And lastly, just to quickly touch on is on finance. And one of the most common scenarios is on invoice processing, right? Be it whether is it from you sending um, uh, sending an invoice. And this is where we can see a typical um, flow is where a vendor sends an invoice as an email attachment. So once the email is received, which is a trigger, you can actually look at, you know, to firstly understand whether is it a invoice related email and secondly, check whether is there any attachment, right? So if this two fulfills in terms of the criteria, you can actually trigger a workflow. Uh, also leverage on AI Builder to actually extract the relevant information from the invoice. And after this information has been extracted, you can actually push it through um, to, to a particular system to store the record or to apply additional business rule if required, right, uh, based on your use case uh, to further process the information as well. So these are some of them that we have seen, and this is really useful because if we talk about invoice processing, and I've seen some statistics, uh, especially for from a Singapore perspective, that the government is trying to change the way on how businesses are actually uh, handling invoices by implementing an e-invoicing uh, ecosystem, right? So they have done a study is that potentially for a human to actually process a typical invoice from a day-to-day -day perspective, it's going to cost about a dollar per invoice, for example. And that's also considering the fact that they're potentially um, have a certain degree of human errors as well. So this is where you can leverage on automation to actually reduce the probability of error and also to free up the poor person from processing hundreds of invoices per day uh, and you know having, uh, having an automation platform to actually handle that and have the, your, the resource to actually do something that's more of value to your company than just this mundane task itself. Yeah, I, I totally agree with with such kind of a volume of invoices getting processed, we can start seeing the ROI coming in pretty fast. And one thing I could remember looking at the, the AI builder extracting relevant information. Um, I, I'm not sure, Jens, whether you have noticed or not. I have started receiving email from Cortana uh, every day morning, which tells me uh, some of the action items which I might have uh, maybe allocated to someone else or somebody has allocated to me. And um, it's it's pretty uh, interesting to see uh, that okay uh, how intelligently some of the keywords are getting extracted and shared with us on every day so i i think that's that's pretty interesting as well yeah i think uh, coming to uh, an end of this session i should say some of the key takeaways what what we could understand what we have thought about is uh, there is a transformation that is happening in the marketplace where opportunities for change are in abundance. If you look around your workplace, you will be able to see a lot of opportunities where you can automate things and you can start changing the way you work. And definitely the platform which is available to you is a unified automation platform, which is on cloud as a service and it is a single non-complicated licensing regime. Everything that is streamlining the processes at the end of the day, it is empowering your employees, empowering yourself, as well as optimizing the cost, right? So the, the whole mantra of this particular session is you need to invest time on what matters the most to you. You should automate the rest. With this, I would like to hand over the session back to Aditi for a quick Q&A session. Aditi, over to you. Uh, thank you, Nikhil and Jensis for such a wonderful session. We'll go ahead and take some time for the questions now. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, please be sure to type your questions into the question box that's there in your control panel. So Nikhil, um, as uh, we were actually going through the presentation and the slides, we uh, had a question from uh, Tun Nong Soi. Uh, 
is power platform can be used for uh, microsoft business central uh Jensus, would you like to take this question sure um yes yeah, so i think uh we have actually announced the integration of uh power platform with business central um and it's actually currently in preview in the release wave two so i think that essentially is actually by publishing the business central um um virtual table right uh has a virtual data source into dataverse that allows you to also interact with the virtual tables to perform CRUD, perhaps actually might be also coming from other data sources as well. And uh, this is where you can actually look forward to that. Uh, this, uh, take note of the uh, the release wave as we actually announce it uh, from a regular basis. Uh, thank you, Jensis. I hope to know this uh, answers your question. Uh, so we have a next question from Ron. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, wants to know will there be a recording of the session? I would take this question. Uh, Ron will be sharing the recording of the session uh, post this webinar with all the participants. Uh, Nikhil and Jensis, I could see a next question uh, coming up uh, from Joseph, uh, who wants to know what browsers and devices can I use with Power Automate? Yeah, I believe um, I, I'll take up this question. Uh, so in terms of uh, support for the browsers or devices, I should say all the latest modern browsers are supported uh, by, by this technology and uh, definitely in terms of uh, mobile support as well uh, if i talk about mobile browsers or maybe mobile resident app this app is available for both ios as well as android right so yeah you you have a pretty good support in terms of um, the usability of these um, applications across different devices i hope that answers the question Thank you, Nikhil. I hope Joseph that answers your question. We have our next question uh, coming up from Yen He. Uh, wants to know how to connect the local SQL database to the uh, Power Automate. Is it possible? Yes, I yeah, can take up that question. Yeah, yeah, Jensen, go ahead, please. Yeah, so we also do provide a on-premise data gateway, such as a bridge for you to actually do data transfer from on-premise to Power Automate as well. So we also do provide that. Okay, uh, thanks, Jensis. I hope uh, Yen He did that answers your question. We have uh, the next question coming up from Abhijit. Uh, uh, he wants to know uh, uh, some tips on how to generate and improve adaptability of uh, these tools with citizen developers in a non IT organization. Yeah, I think it's a, a pretty open ended uh, question, but I should say that. Uh, uh, inherently power apps support a lot of accessibility features right which can which can support um, quick adaption of these applications and uh, yeah that's that's something what i could remember offhand uh, i understand that support is there uh, genesis is there anything else that that can support um, quick adaptability or maybe enhanced uh, for yes. for the users I can actually share a um, typical use case. So it it's not about just how um, how in terms of the ease of use of the tools, but it's also mm -hmm. about the culture within the organization on how you want to yeah. promote um, your end users to really pick up something and to to start creating uh, creating uh, workflows or even creating uh, local platforms for them to actually try out. Typically, this is where I I always face the challenge is that customer will come to me saying that. We want to use this platform, right? But uh, they do not know where to start. So a good place to start is always, you know, get a group of users who are open, who are keen, get them into a, you know, a mini pilot or mini project, right? Get them to share in terms of what are the possible ways for them to innovate their day-to-day -day processes or things that they are doing. And also at the same time, you know, we have a lot of learning resources available online, uh, and these are made free to every everyone who is able to assess, right? For them to actually learn uh, through a on-demand learning path, for them to pick up this tool, and for them to, you know, slowly refer to these materials, uh, and really, you know, uh, and lastly, it's really about having um, the culture and giving them a safe environment to innovate and to try it out, so that, you know, they, they feel that, you know, there is a space for them to really um, just try fast, fail fast, um, whichever works for them. 
Yep, I believe uh, that's a complete suite which is available for users to explore. I think it, uh, that's pretty much uh, available to everyone. Thank you, uh, Nikhil and Genesis. I hope Abhijit that answers your question. Um, we have our next question coming up from Malika Arjun Goni. Uh, can students use Power Automate Power Apps using their personal IDs? I believe uh, uh, when you say personal IDs, I think uh, you can definitely sign up for trial versions, right? Uh, right. So uh, I'm not sure, Genesis, that whether the pro features are available on on the educational module. Mm. Okay. So I think if let's say from the education module, if the your organization has enabled the licenses, you should be able to assess. But if not, there's actually a Power App community plan. So if whether you have a school account, you can actually sign up for this. Um, and I think the focus of this particular plan is for you to actually build up. It's basically a free development environment for individual use for you to explore and build application and workflow with the full functionality. Um, and I think it also allows you to connect to a certain um, number of out of box connectors available as well. Um, and this is where you can actually explore. So if you have um, the time, you can actually just open up a browser and type in uh, search for Power Apps Community Plan. You should find the instruction on how to actually get access to it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Genesis. And uh, now we are taking up this last question uh, and uh, post uh, this. Uh, the remaining questions we'll take up one on one post the session. Uh, so coming up uh, to the last question, that is from Andy Wong. Uh, is the win automation part of Microsoft uh, Power Automate? Uh, couldn't find it in my uh, Office 365. Yeah, it's a part of uh, Power Automate now. So win automation previously was uh, a tool under the name of Soft Automotive, but uh, after uh, Microsoft acquisition, now it is uh, a part of Power Automate. So. Win Automation is a tool which you can download on your system for again authoring or training your bots, right? So okay. that that is a tool that you need to download and install, and it's available there. Thank you, Nikhil. Andy, I hope this answers your question. Or if in case uh, you need any further assistance, we can get connected to you uh, post this webinar. So uh, thank you. This is all the time we had for the question answer round. Uh, now it's time to reveal the special offer for all the participants. And I would like you, Nikhil, to tell us more about this offer. Yeah, thanks, Aditi. So uh, as much as we were trying to embrace and uh, trying to put a lot of emphasis on enabling the business users to take the first step towards automation, and we tried to highlight a lot of things which are available out of the box, pre-built templates, connectors, a lot of learning materials is available even for uh, students there are um, a lot of educational content available you can log in create your education account and start exploring the tool what we understand that uh, it is really important that you are if you are embarking on the journey um, what what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, offer you a kind of a, uh, you can say functionality which is very much defined with a very much defined scope a defined fixed timeline and a very defined fixed budget, right? So we are just trying to make a little bit uh, things predictable for you if you want to just take a leap uh, in terms of automating your facility management system or you want to have an asset request management. So under the facility management, if I talk about a couple of things which I could uh, remember often like um, taxi booking, uh, your uh, meeting room booking, or maybe you want to book some other resources within your organization and you want to have an application to manage it, we can have it built for you with a very defined scope of work and definitely a special uh, pricing package, a predictable timeline which we can offer. And definitely the details of this particular offer will be circulated, shared with all the participants after uh, this event. And under the asset uh, request management, we are taking care of two modules. One module is dedicated to IT asset uh, request management. Another is dedicated to non-IT request management. So these uh, modules uh, will be delivered on Power Platform using technologies like Power Automate, Power Apps, uh, AI infusion into it. 
right? And uh, definitely the kind of, a, uh, you can say, the fixed scope, fixed timeline, and fixed budgeted offering will be placed in front of you, which makes things a lot, lot more predictable than as compared to conventional application development scenarios, right? And uh, definitely we are open to talk more about it in detail if this is something of interest to you. Once you get the details, um, you can just give us a buzz and we are ready to talk and take you uh, to further details and see how we can move forward here. Aditi, that's pretty much uh, in terms of the special offer for uh, the participant today. Over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Nikhil. Uh, for all the details that you have shared, uh, audience, please be assured that we will be sharing the fixed scope offerings with all of you through email along with the recording of this session. If you have any further uh, queries for us, kindly do email us and we'll reply to you. My email address will now be on your screens. It's aditi.rastogi at pathinfotech.com. Uh, and uh, uh, before we end this session, my sincere apologies for some technical glitch because of which uh, some of you face issues with audio when the video was playing. Uh, we'll look into the same and address it going forward. And with that, we end this webinar. Thank you, Nikhil and Jensis, uh, for this informative session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time and joining us. We appreciate you being here. Uh, we have more webinars uh, coming in the future. And if you are interested to be part uh, of our upcoming webinars in the series, please do sign up on our website, LinkedIn, and other social media platforms uh, for more information. Once again, Thank you for joining us. We will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.